Hi everyone, it's Crystal back at it again with another video and I have such an exciting guest with me today. This is Shabari, an MIT student interested in everything from artificial intelligence to history and I'm super excited to have her share with you guys her journey to getting into MIT. Yeah, hi, um, I'm Shabari. So excited to have you on today. So we're going to get into all the nitty gritty of what Shabari did, extracurricular stats, everything like that, the juicy stuff that I know you guys are interested in hearing about. So make sure to like this video, subscribe, tell your friends, friends help friends. So whether you're a high school senior coming up or you're just starting your high school journey, I know that this is going to be super helpful for you guys. So let's dive right in. So Shabari, thank you so much for appearing on the channel and one thing I want you guys to know is that she is a mentor and tutor with my Ivy education the college counseling and tutoring and academic consulting company you guys all know that I run the name is right over here so she's going to be available to work with you guys for help applying to colleges like MIT but not limited to it tutoring anything you guys might need you guys, if you aren't following us on TikTok yet, we are blowing up over there. So make sure to follow us there too and email us at info at myivyeducation.org. I'll put it up right here to get in touch with me, Shabari, or any of our other mentors. So why did you pick MIT, Shabari? Yeah, um, other than this, like, you know, maker culture environment where you can make things, you can do things, and uh, you have access to all these resources and clubs. I also think that uh, uh, something that I really noticed while walking around MIT's campus, while talking to current students, is um, a lot of colleges talk about how um, their student bodies are, you know, very collaborative and there's a very collaborative culture. But at MIT, I really saw that happening in front of my eyes. Like, People really care about, um, you know, teamwork. People really care about working on, you know, problem sets together. That's why they're so hard. S students sit together and they work on these, you know, problem sets which take them hours to do. And it just, you know, builds, um, you know, a build, it helps you learn and also like helps you make friends. And I think it's just an amazing like culture they have there with um, this collaboration. Absolutely, I completely agree. I have some videos on the channel about my high school, the Stanford University Online High School, and it's an online global school. So one of our annual meetups was always actually MIT Splash on MIT's campus program where basically MIT students teach high schoolers for a weekend. And absolutely, I felt the same way that you did when I was going there just for those weekends even. So can you tell the viewers what you're majoring in and any stats that you're comfortable sharing, like GPA, SAT, ACT score, APs, anything like that, any key classes from high school? Yeah, um, so I'm majoring in AI or bioengineering, maybe computational biology, but my stats, so I had a 4.0 in um, throughout high school, all four years. Um, I've taken nine AP tests. Um, and uh, the reason, and I also have, uh, I also did the IB um, International Baccalaureate Program. Uh, and in that I was able to take four higher level classes, uh, math, physics, chemistry, and biology, um, along with history, English, and French as my standard level classes. So I took an extra IB class outside of my diploma, which was chemistry. And I, also, uh, regarding to like ACT and SAT testing, I have a 35 on the ACT. Um, yeah, that's mostly it. I think one of the really key things there is you were doing both AP and IB courses, which is really a high level of rigor. I mean, kudos to you. That could not have been easy. So for anyone listening, I mean, this is a clear way to go above and beyond any kind of normal path at your high school whether you're taking a bunch more APs than other people or you're doing both these curricula, which is pretty rare, but very impressive. You always want to be thinking about what is your school offer and how can you take the most advantage of it and take the most rigorous classes possible. So yeah, hats off to you for that for sure. And so I would love to have you explain to everyone watching the extracurriculars that you did in high school. Some of them are very exciting and I think that people would really want to know about them and will get very inspired. Yeah, so I did like a lot of different extracurriculars. I'm like a really like interdisciplinary sort of person. I'm interested in a bunch of different things. But um, 
one of my major extracurriculars was, um, at least for my MIT application, was my coronavirus genome project, where I analyzed. Um, so there are publicly available coronavirus genomes, COVID, you know, COVID nineteen genomes online um, at, at the National Institute of Health's website. So I um, took the took those genomes and I analyzed them with. Uh, Python programs. Uh, and uh, with that, I was able to like uh, do a re little research project out of that. And I was able to find why uh, the genome, the, the genomes of coronaviruses show that they are less prevalent in warmer countries, and why that could be the case, looking at their genomes. So that, um, that like research project was recognized by the U.S. Navy through their U U.S. like Naval Science Award at uh, my state science fair, and uh, I've entered in like separate like um, research competitions. Like uh, I was given like a grant to attend a biotech conference because of this previous work. Um, I would cold email research researchers uh, for these kinds of grants for these kinds of things um, to attend these conferences and all that. Uh, so that's with like, that was one of my main projects. And then I also have um, a lot of writing projects, different writing projects. One of my major projects is uh, related to the history of science. So it's like um, the uh, history of environmentalism and uh, the chemical DDT. Uh, this work, uh, I competed in National History Day. Um, and um, other than this, I also like received grants for this, like from Grip Tape. Uh, to pursue this project. I've um, done other writing projects that have been published in, you know, the United Nations Journal uh, for like, it's called the competition, like International Social Studies Competition for Youth, that. And uh, my other big extracurricular, I think, other than that is um, a lot of the Olympiads I do, like I do uh, the USA Biology Olympiad, the SABO, and um, I'm on the Science Olympiad team. I'm a science club officer, all kinds of different extracurriculars. And you've had an op-ed published in New York Times, Letter to the Editor, right, specifically. Yeah. And uh, you've also created your own science mentorship program. I think that people would really love to hear more about how you went about getting the resources to create that, what it was like, kind of how you put that together and who you helped, because I'll bet that was also, along with these very impressive accolades, another big feature that MIT really liked because you were giving back to the community, if you want to speak to that a little bit. Yeah, of course. Um, So I think with that program, it's called Genius, like the word gene, uh, G-E-N-E-I-U-S. So uh, a little play on words. But Genius uh, focuses on, you know, informatics, bioengineering, a little bit of, you know, history and a little bit of ethics. It's all like combined um, in this like interdisciplinary program. I would go into a local middle school after school once a week and I would teach them these topics like for um one week, I'd be just teaching them about, you know, how can you use PCR and the polymerase chain reaction? How does that work? And how can that detect crime? But it was also important to address, you know, the ethics and the history behind that, which I think was like a unique uh, aspect of my program. I was in contact with the teacher at the middle school who was really helpful in helping me, you know, how do you effectively convey this idea to middle schoolers, right? And I didn't have experience in that, but he was really helpful uh, with that. And I uh, reached out to him separately, but uh, a lot of, I got a lot of support from the National Academy of Engineering. Uh, they have a program called Engineer Girl Ambassadors and I applied to it so that I would get mentorship, so that I would get funds, um, so that I could go to this like, you know, conference uh, in Washington DC where uh, I will meet with other uh, other ambassadors and talk about our own projects and how, you know, uh, we can improve the projects, how we can uh, make sure they reach more students, um, teaching techniques, all that. So it sounds like from all of this, you probably had a treasure trove of topics to talk about in your college application essays by that point. And one of my favorite aspects of your essays is how you do talk about a lot of these cool things, but you also bring in your personality and humor and let that shine. So would you like to talk about what you talked about in your essays? Yeah, my approach was um, thinking about, um, you know, 
like how in English classes, they tell you to start your essay with a hook. So it draws the reader in. So that was the main uh, premise of my essays. Whenever I would, uh, when I had no idea what to write, I would be like, how can we draw the reader in? And it wouldn't be, it doesn't need to be something, you know, like crazy um, that'll like um, that you've done or whatever. It can be something uh, really mundane, really like everyday things. So my approach was take an object, take an experience, take some kind of memory that's very, that's very much not memorable. You know, something uh, that seems like an everyday memory, something that's just normal. And then um, you just describe that in detail. And the reader, the admissions officer is obviously going to be like, what is this? Uh, this, uh, this is really strange. Uh, they're going to be hooked in. And why are, why is this uh, student just talking about, um, uh, you know, th their ceiling or whatever. Like that was one of my essays. I talked about finding patterns and ceilings and how that led me to, um, you know, love, like history and like the humanities even more and how I would, you know, find patterns in science and humanities uh, in my research projects. Uh, because as a kid, I would find patterns in my ceiling walls. So something like that, right? You need to take an everyday a normal experience and then I would connect them to my interests. Uh, in every essay, I try to show a different part of myself, right? If I talked about science fair in one essay, I would not do that again. Uh, so you need to show them. In one essay, you need to show uh, that you're inquisitive. In another, you can show that you're a very collaborative person. In another, you can show that you're very, like, um, intellectual. You know, that's the goal for me. Definitely. And I think that what you're hitting on is a concept that you and I have talked about before, which is where you want to have some sort of a spike in some way. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Colleges don't want well-rounded students. They want a well-rounded class. But we're all each multifaceted 3D human beings. So if you can actually bring together multiple of your interests instead of just one and intertwine them into one specific kind of topic that takes from all these different areas, then that is how you're going to stand out as much as possible. So I think that was definitely a big characteristic of your essays. And I'm sure that they could see how you could really bring something to the table that no other student could. And then you could take advantage of their programs and opportunities that no other their college offered and that you know another really big aspect of what everyone needs to do when they're applying to colleges that we've really harped on on this channel and will continue to do so so do you think that there are any characteristics of your application that helped you specifically stand out and get in and any idea of what you think MIT is looking for having been through the process yeah I can't like you know pinpoint a particular part of my application and be like oh this is what I what got me in. But um, for my like, uh, you know, educated uh, guests and my like reasoning going through this process, not just for MIT, but for other schools, I think personally what they're looking for is, like you said, um, colleges do not want a well-rounded uh, student. They want a well-rounded class. So there's been this like rise of students who are interested in, you know, getting a spike um, and um, just uh, do, being really good at one thing and just focusing on that one thing. But I don't think, college, I think colleges are really moving away from that. And they're really looking for students who are, you know, uh, who have several spikes, like they're good at two or three things, or they have two or three main qualities. And they're bringing that through, um, through their essays, through their activities and whatnot. So for me, that was, uh, I'm interested in, you know, I guess, three big areas like for me I'm really interested in biology and I showed that through Olympiads that really showed that I was you know willing to ha handle the rigor at MIT willing to handle the um, the science heavy course load at MIT then my interest in AI and uh, my interest in uh, computer science programming and all that and that was um, exhibited through my like extracurriculars like I did a summer program with MIT called Beaver Works Summer Institute and then finally, uh, I'm really into the humanities and writing. So I had these several big spikes in which um, I, you know, I did activities, I had awards in each of them. And I think that's what, um, personally, I think that's what colleges are really looking for with, uh, in terms of, you know, spikes and well-roundedness. 
Absolutely. Yeah, for me, I went with things like creative writing and music and an interest in business and entrepreneurship to get into Columbia. It's something that we definitely try and foster in all the students that we work with. This way you can really get away from the crowd and stand out. So definitely agree with you there. Finally, Shabari, do you want to tell everyone what you are available to help them out with if they want to reach out and get in touch with you? What sort of services are you offering with my IB education? Yeah, um, so I uh, can help with like Olympiads, particularly like biology Olympiads, uh, whether it's like USABO, British Biology Olympiads, Science Olympiads, Soil Biology, that kind of stuff. Um, I can also help with like AP classes and IB classes. I can also help with college um, applications, like not just MIT, but I've also been accepted to five Ivy Leagues um, with a likely letter from Columbia. So I can help with uh, how you can frame your application, especially if you're like um, at the beginning, like uh, the process. And there are a lot of folks out there like that. We work with a lot of you guys, no matter what you're interested in, we're going to make sure that we have the perfect person to pair you with to make sure that they can guide you. They've been there and done that in this time when it's as crazy competitive and challenging as it is. Don't hesitate to reach out, get in touch with us. We can put you in touch with Shabari and help you guys out with anything that you might need as high schoolers, middle schoolers. I mean, the earlier you start, the better. So you can implement exactly the advice that Shabari was just talking about. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Shabari, for this really insightful advice that you're giving these kids. I think everyone is going to benefit so much from it. So if you enjoyed this video, like, hit that notifications bell, subscribe to the channel, send this video to your friends, follow us on our other platforms. I'll put those up on the screen and we'll be back with another video really soon.